Damn, Daniel. <laughs> it's appropriate to say now. How's it going on, guys? Jack here with another video. So, today we'll be checking out some more Warhammer 3 content. And I have to thank you guys for reminding me that I actually was in the, uh, was it the Into the World of Corn video was a showcase of Scarbrand whom I could not recognize. Like, I was wondering about that, like, I had an idea of it, but I wasn't too sure. But I guess, like, the lack of maddening screaming wasn't actually ringing a bell. <laughs> After watching the TTS series, if the Emperor had a text-to-speech device, that is, Scarbrand has just been imprinted in my brain as being the screaming guy, like, Scarbrand does not like to be put at the end of a teaser! I definitely believe that that is the way that he will react to this. But in any of the circumstances, we have uh, the Chaos Undivided trailer that we're going to start with. So, let's get into it. Well... I was mortal once. You were. A prince then. Now. A prince now. Of demons. The gods themselves taught me to bear their mark. What do you know? I have time. I see. Coming slaughter. Customizations, wow. I think the vibe. Oh, look at him flicking that wrist. <laughs> Trailer game in here is amazing. Yeah, don't know how I feel about that. No longer. I am the God Slayer. All right. Wow. It's amazing to know that you. Is is this like an experiment that they're doing? That you're going to be able to customize them? No. That looks so amazing. Yeah, like you get to be like a prince of demons for both Zench, Nurgle, and... Uh, oh my god, Slanesh. As Korn as well, of course. But, I mean, just the plain skin looks amazing. Wow. Actually, a good question that I uh, have been wondering about. Like, who do you think would win in a fight between the Chaos Guards? Like, I know, uh, say that Nurgle has the stagnation thing. Uh, Zinch will play the long game, as he's the big strategist, the master manipulator. The thing is, uh, knowing Scarbrand and how freaking powerful he is, I just have to go back to the guy. And how he challenged like all the demons in his realm and uh, even like the axes that he owns have trapped <laughs> some demons trapped into it. Um, or this was it? Did it, did he trap them in the axes or did he actually forge the axes? I'm a bit confused on that. But anyways, um, Cone is kind of lazy, and the reason as to why I say that is because he is also very powerful. And it seems to kind of like live vicariously to the other characters that get to slaughter everything else for him. And he's just placed by the murder of it all. But he doesn't engage in anything himself. In contrast with like Zench and Church, who are like blessing the people and influencing and scheming in the background all the time. And Slanesh, well, she, she, it he <laughs> does its thing but yeah if you if you have an answer for that or wh whom do you think he could win such a fight leave it in the comment section below i'd like to know your opinion on that anyways we have another one here demon prince customization the demon prince leader of the legion of chaos faction is okay. a uniquely customizable legendary lord for total war warhammer 3. players begin their demonic journey by naming their demon 
ideally something fierce and terrifying, befitting of a spawn of evil, something like Zarog the Undying, or yeah. Daniel, Daniel <laughs> the Demon. <laughs> Our Demon Prince enters the world looking Your reasonably man. intimidating, but things are about to get interesting. The demonic glory tab is a window into a nightmare-fueled world. Whoa! From here, Daniel can earn new arms, legs, torsos, heads, wings, tails, and weapons. Can you combine? Each of the ruinous gods are offering thematic limbs in exchange for glory. A currency unique to the Demon Prince, glory can be earned in a variety of different ways, like completing missions, dedicating victories to, or building settlements in the name of a specific god, and I see. more. As Daniel spreads misery across the world, committing atrocities in the name of the gods, he's... It, it's, uh, sorry for pausing, but, like, it, it feels like an actual relevant mechanic to have. In contrast to, for example, as I mentioned, I encountered um, the likes of Nakai, uh, the big croc macho macho man. <laughs> no, but like when playing a beast man, you also have to make these sacrifices and build the temples to the gods. But I never felt like it ever had any true influence onto the gameplay until you finally get to have the ritual done. But it's like, eh, yeah, but now you actually see the influence of it. Like, yeah, with uh, Grand Cafe, you had the, uh, was it, it wasn't Karma, what was it called? Harmony. So, yeah, it seems like most of the factions now are going to have something special to them, which is a nice twist. Like, some different... Rewarded with an abundance of fresh new looks. In the Character Details tab, you can pick and mix unlocked limbs and weapons to create your perfect Chaos Champion. Each item comes with spells, abilities, and stat boosts. Orale. You can cater your demon prince to your playstyle. Dedicating Daniel to a specific chaos god <laughs> will tint the color of his skin and unlock more powerful items quicker, but comes at the cost of variety. When you're done in the changing room, show Yikes. off Daniel's stunning outfit in multiplayer. With billions of potential combinations, you can turn Daniel into a formidable wizard in one battle, or an unstoppable melee juggernaut the next. Oh. Step into the hooves of a demon and forge your own path. Damn. Experience total war like never before, as you mold the power of the ruinous gods to your will. Damn, Daniel. <laughs> it's appropriate to say now. Dominate, destroy, and devour your enemies in the name of Chaos Undivided. Will you conquer your demons or become one? Awesome. It's like a prototype, right? Like they are doing it with one character experimental, perhaps also with some others. Like something for. I don't know, maybe future expansions and or DLCs because it's very important to have that around. But yeah, it looks crazy nice. Okay, let's uh, check out some more here. Kislev gameplay. That's great. Kislev, the motherland, one of the key pillars holding chaos. Mother Russia. <laughs> stuck in an eternal winter and a civil war between the ice court and the great orthodoxy is on the rise. Yeah, that so seems like a heretic. Catherine, our legendary lord needs to unite these lands and drive chaos back, or else Kislev will be lost, and the old world will surely follow. Ah, it looks With so the much more pretty. With at Gerslev routed, we need to turn our attention to Grigor and the Ropsman clan. They have turned their back on the ice court and joined with our main rivals, the Great Orthodoxy. They oh. have captured settlements around the Eastern Oblast that we need to get back on the path to our current goal, Can't the do city that. of Prague. We must take the cities of Igorov, Volksgrad, and Fort Chakova, amassing a loyal legion as we go. Frostfang's bite! Let's see what's special about this one. First to fall is Igorov. With such a small garrison, victory comes quickly to Catherine's forces. Ooh, look at those animations. Over comes next, also ill prepared to face the wrath of the ice court. I somewhat feel like it is going to be a lot funnier to play with them rather than it is with Grand Cafe when it comes to sieges. Somewhat. Because uh, I have zero 
well, close to zero experience with um, other Total War games. But like, as I've seen some gameplay of Total War Rome, uh, like the cities are a, lit, a lot more packed. So like densely packed because of, uh, well, the ways and or alleys of the cities are a lot smaller, uh, which makes like movement a bit more tricky. But as we've already seen, like it's like somewhat multi-level sometimes and it's just very well built. So I I don't think it's going to be like a minus at all, but perhaps it could be a little bit frustrating going to a city and just feeling like this. A bit too much empty room. Volksgrad, isolated within the Oblast as the last remaining Robsman stronghold falls easily, even with assistance from Grigor himself. With mm. the Eastern Oblast under our banner, only Prague remains. A strong faction, however, cannot rely on militaristic might alone and needs those who currently reside under our flag to stay in line. Assigning an Ataman to govern the area in our Lord's absence can ensure that public order, even in these darkest days, is maintained. The right. dilemmas Katarin can face can be handled by these Atamans, allowing seen. us to continue our campaign unimpeded. They will fall. Bloodied after the damage dealt from losing the Eastern oh, Oblast, the I Robsman clan you. show no signs of surrender and hold on to Prague till their very last breath. Nice. Oh, that's going to be nice. Can we actually use those to to siege, like to get over the walls, instead of having to put up ladders all the time? Oh. The Robsman clan's defense fails, and the city of Prague is ours. With Prague under the Ice Court's flag, we can now focus on uniting the Kislevites within Troll Country. To mm -hmm. help divide and conquer, we'll train a new Ice Witch through the Ice Court, Katarin's unique feature for training new heroes and lords. I With see. a new army under our wing, we can seek to unite Kislev while defending ground already taken. But while Katarin may try to solve Kislev's problems, the ruinous powers won't stay still forever. Kugath Plaguefather, Lord of Nurgle, spreads mm -hmm. his foul forces of pestilence into the Eastern Oblast. Yeah. We'll send Katarin out to stem the tide of Nurgle's forces and drive out chaos. It's Wednesday, my dudes. The battle is not without its casualties, but the Plague Father's forces are removed from the Eastern of Last. Despite the victory, now is not the time for respite. The forces of Khorne have moved in on Prague, looking there for more is. skulls for the Skull Throne. The cursed city's strategic importance means we cannot let it fall. The battle will be a major challenge to Katarin's ability as a commander. To try and maximize our army's ability, we'll head into the Devotion tab, invoke the Kislevite god Tor, and dedicate this battle to them. Invocation uh -huh. in place, we march on Prague to the defense of our people and What's in the name mean? of our gods. Get like a power boost when you do that. Our forces are stretched thin, which Scarbrand knows. Getting hasty and impatient for blood, he separates his forces into two, one team with himself leading the charge at one gate with a small vanguard and another team with siege towers to try and wear both sides thin. Didn't I read somewhere that the um, Skyrim doesn't have like much leadership abilities? At least when you have to put on uh, skill points. <laughs> like it's by only him because, well, it's pretty much like a one-man army. Should they need to reinforce one another? Oh, here we go. Nice! So they do work.
With the south gate just holding, Katarin rushes to the west gate, currently waning under the ferocity of Scarlet. Although facing one of Korn's most ferocious generals in one-on-one -on -one combat is suicide, a <laughs> true leader will do what they can for their land. She gets his focused attention, alleviating the pressure on the Tsar guard. All right. With newfound vigor, they swarm Scarbrand, weakening him and thus his forces too. Routed, Scarbrand leaves the battlefield, knowing his forces have lost this day. Scarbrand's haze retreating. The battle is arduous and not without cost and casualties, but Prague still stands. Tsarina Katarin has proven herself a worthy leader and defender of the people. Hurrah. With chaos put at bay for the meantime. We once again turn back to the people of Kislev as we try to unite the motherland under one banner. All right, it kind of gives you a little bit of a feeling of playing Catherine, huh? Oh, we have something here the Soul Grinder. It was just uploaded. That's straight up. <laughs> Yo, that's the League of Legends character right there. What's his name? Ergot? Ergot. <laughs> that's freaking Ergot. All he needs is like, yeah, it's the old design of Ergot. All he needs is like the, the, the cannon foot. I am now expecting a lot more characters customizable. I think that they've gone through this scene that it actually works and uh, the people who have had the game already um, are proving it to, to be a success, I guess. But with that said guys, that was today's um, videos on Total Warhammer 3. Pretty cool, pretty cool. I have done an exception uh, that I don't do quite too often. I actually pre-ordered uh, the game yes uh, I, that's something that I broke off doing after the disappointment of cyberpunk 2077 but I've done that nonetheless and I know that I might not be able to uh, play as often as I would like to because there are just way too many games here in 2021 what wow my brain is still a year back 2022 as well as elder rings and uh, which one actually from the console gameplay as well hopefully the pc port works just as well um yeah th those are mainly going to be the ones that i'm looking forward to but guys how about you are you ready for total warhammer 3 let me know in the comment section below thank you so much for checking out this video and please watch some other stuff on the channel and of course as always if you liked it give it a like and i wish you a wonderful evening see you guys in the next one bye